it is election day in Georgia as voters determine the outcome of the Senate runoff races. Democratic candidate John Ossoff visited a polling place in Atlanta this morning. He said he was feeling confident and urged everyone to vote. Democratic candidate Reverend Raphael Warnock took a last-minute campaign stop in Marietta, Georgia this morning. He said today is about Georgia and the future of the state. Both Ossoff and Warnock are facing off against Republican incumbent senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. Senator Perdue has been quarantining after someone from his campaign tested positive for coronavirus. For more on all of this, I want to bring in CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Hi, Ed. Great to see you. So President Trump and President-elect Biden both held rallies yesterday. At President Trump's rally, he continued to repeat these baseless claims of voter fraud. Are Republicans concerned that this could impact their chances today? Yeah, there's some concern. There has been uh, for the last several weeks about all of the different things he's been doing and saying and whether or not it would deter people from showing up to vote for him today. But, you know, uh, the one thing that we do know is that these last minute rallies held by the president and the vice president in traditionally Republican parts of a state do usually help drive up Republican turnout at the last minute. It worked in 2018 during that cycle. It worked over the past year when he and the vice president held rallies with some key congressional candidates uh, in the closing days of the election. So, and it helped drive up turnout for himself, frankly, in several of these states. So, you know, what, what is better known, what is, what is more clear, is that by showing up for these events, he does help drive up enthusiasm. And knowing that Republicans traditionally vote on the day of, today, holding that event last night was obviously designed to compel people, hey, don't forget to show up today to vote. Um, you know, this is going to be an incredibly close race. Much like the presidential contest, we're likely not going to know the results even late tonight unless for some reason one of these candidates has a blowout, which is not anticipated. Uh, but we've been proven wrong before in this business. So, you know, having him show up on the margins probably helps more than not having him show up at all, despite what a lot of Republicans are privately saying they're concerned about, just given the fact that traditionally his decision to show up in these states helps. Right. His presence is, is enough. All right. So I also want to bring in CBS News political director Caitlin Conan. Uh, Caitlin, uh, I'm so glad we got your shot up there. Um, so, Caitlin, before President-elect Biden won Georgia this November, the state had not voted for a Democratic candidate for president in decades. How significant would it be if these two Democratic senators won today? Well, hi, Tanya, and Happy New Year. Thanks for having me reflecting and Ed and I both started in these roles around the same time in early 2018 and started tracking the 2020 presidential and Senate and congressional elections. And I don't think either of us thought that we'd be sitting here in early January 2021 talking about two Senate races in a traditionally red state. And so I think that just goes to show the story that we saw across America on Election Day, which is an evolving America and the changing demographics, particularly in suburbs, where we saw more young voters, more non-white voters and more women coming out in support of Democrats. And I think that is one thing that will be very telling in these elections is how is that at play? And as Ed just referenced, it's all about turnout, turnout, turnout. And is President Trump able to drive numbers among his base and get them to vote in person today because they traditionally show up and did in November as well on election day itself. Um, his rhetoric, uh, I think there was some risk that it could turn off voters who, by him saying that he believed uh, the election in, in Georgia in particular um, was rigged, that they could stay home. Um, but alternatively, it could get his base angry and riled up um, and get them to turn out today. So that's all stuff that we'll be watching. So, Caitlin, we know that over three million people have already voted, voted early for these races. Do we know anything about the demographic or the makeup of those early voters? And are we expected to see these numbers continue throughout the day? Well, the pace of early voting has indicated that we should be seeing high turnout, especially in these runoff elections where, where turnout is lower than it is in the general election. Um, and there's so far a little bit of good news for both sides here. Um, we're seeing an uptick in Georgia black voters compared to early voting in November. 
which should be good news for Democrats. Um, we're also seeing an uptick in voters over 65 uh, compared to where they were in early voting in November in Georgia, which should be um, favoring Republicans. So we'll be watching turnout when it comes to black voters across the state in terms of a lot of voters, particularly in Atlanta, Atlanta suburbs, who voted for President-elect Joe Biden in the general election, but actually for Republican Senator Perdue. And they had a split ticket and it was more vote against President Trump than for Democrats. So we'll see if they turn out today. Um, and there were also new voters that we saw in early voting, which tended to trend non-white and younger. So, Ed, of course, in November, it took days to know the final results of the election, because, largely because of the surge of in mail-in voting due to the coronavirus pandemic. You mentioned that it could take a while for us to learn the results again in Georgia. When do you anticipate that might be? And if it's close enough, do you anticipate we could see recounts, you know, three recounts after the presidential election? Could we see that kind of activity after this runoff? We could. We could. We absolutely could. Um, and, and so you got to assume that it could take perhaps the rest of this week at the least if, if again, these are really close races. Got to remember one thing. David Perdue nearly won his race against John Ossoff. He just got pulled down just below 50 percent to 49 point, I think it was 7 percent ultimately. So he was only three tenths of a percentage point away from exceeding the 50 percent threshold and not being forced into a runoff. Raphael Warnock and Senator Leffler were in a multi-candidate field, multiple Republicans and Democrats. If you add up all of the Republican votes versus all the Democratic votes, the Republican beat the Democrat in that race by a little more. So there's a chance tonight. If, obviously, we have all sorts of potential resolutions to this. Both Democrats win. Democrats take control of the Senate. One of the Republicans wins, spoiling the Democrats' chances of taking control of the Senate. Uh, both Republicans win. Both Democrats win. But you also could see one of these end up getting settled pretty easily and the other one being closer. Uh, and, and so don't be surprised if that happens. And like Caitlin, curious to see if someone who voted for Biden and voted for Purdue shows up again to vote for Purdue or if they switch. And do we see anyone that voted for one of the Republicans in one of the races and voted for the Democrat in the other, and why? Because for the most part over the last few weeks, these two have been campaigning on either side as a ticket, that you're getting a package deal here. Vote for Ossoff, vote for Warnock, vote for Leffler, vote for Purdue, uh, and not necessarily seeing them campaign separately. It was cheaper to do that. It was more effective because they're both obviously on the ballot. But I have been really intrigued to see whether we see at all someone who votes for one of the Democrats and one of the Republicans and why. And if the exit polling that we get tonight susses that out, because if that's the case, then this became not just about party and the obvious stakes. Mm -hmm. When the president says the world's watching, he's he's totally correct about that. The world is watching this because they understand the stakes, as do most Americans. But I'll be curious to see if anyone's personality or the narrative that they were sharing with voters over the last several weeks compelled somebody to perhaps cross the aisle and vote for another member of the other party while voting for one or the other. That will be interesting to see. All right, well, Caitlin Conant and Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much. Thank you.